Hello and Assalamu alaikum everyone. Today in this lecture we are going to talk about scale of operations. What is scale of operations? What are the factors that influence your scale of operations? And uh, economies of scale and diseconomies of scale. Just a brief overview of what they are. And we are going to discuss some more about economies of scale and diseconomies of scale in a separate video. We are going to look at special types of economies of scale. Internal and external. And same for diseconomies of scale. Now scale of operations. It is basically the maximum output that can be achieved using the available re inputs or resources. This scale can only be increased in long term by employing more of all inputs. So it is basically the capacity of your business to produce output using the available input. So what is the maximum output that you can produce with your available inputs that you have? That is the basic the scale of operation. So, it can only increase when you have when you can increase your inputs of course so if you can increase your inputs only then you can increase your output the maximum output because it's already maximum you know so you have to increase your inputs in order to get and reach a new maximum level output level so what are the factors that influence scale of operation now scale of operations can be you know sometimes similar to the size of the business because small businesses will have less number of outputs because of which their maximum output will also be less as compared to larger organizations which have a large number of inputs available, large number of resources available because of which the maximum output is also very large. Now what are the factors that influence scale of operations? The objectives first of all, the objectives of the owners of a business. They may be reluctant to expand a small business due to various reasons but perhaps owners have satisfying as the objective or profit maximization or even CSR. So basically any other objective that other than the growth because an owners don't want to just grow the the objectives is different maybe some different reason for that but the basic idea is that since owners don't have the objective of growth because of that it also influences your scale of operation so if you don't even have an objective for growth why would you increase your scale of operations yeah it doesn't make sense so you might be having some good profits or you might not want to harm your society that's why you you have csr or you're just satisfied with your profits that you're making so you don't need to grow now capital available may be limited due to which growth will be restrained so capital also plays an important part if you can't increase your capital if you can't afford more capital then you can't increase your scale of operations because you can't get more inputs so capital is also an important part if you can't if your capital is limited that means your growth is also restrained the size of the market that the business operates in may be relatively small or deliberate choice for niche market so you, the, your target market that perhaps is very small so that even if you increase your inputs increasing your maximum output won't do any good because there is no much not much demand the demand is already being met with your current output that you are being the current supplying the current output that you are supplying so there is no point in increasing your output when there is no demand so that is generally when you are operating in a niche market now the extent of competition is also an important factor that the scale of operations so if there is intensive competition which can it can limit your scale of operations like if your competition is intense that probably means that you have to fight on price factors and because of which you might not have enough capital for purchasing inputs or because of the intense competition you just can't grow there's just so much competition you know that even if you grow it won't make you any better because the competition is still going on and you might even if you increase your output level you might not be able to sell that particular output to your customers because of the intense competition the supply is much greater than the output that you are supplying the demand actually the demand is the supply is much greater than the demand so possibility for economies of scale may offer opportunities for expansion so if you know that okay economies of scale can be availed somehow then you might possibly want to avail expansion try to do some other methods use some small gradually expand your business so that you can increase your scale of operations and uh, when you increase your scale of operations you can reduce your unit cost because of which you will achieve economies of scale we're going to talk about economies of scale in the next slide the state of the external economy may also affect the scale of operations so if the external economy is not doing good economy is going to recession and things like that so because of that also your 
scale of operations may be restricted. Legal restrictions may prohibit or limit expansion, so there might be some legal restrictions set up that you can't expand your business by so and so area, you can't cover that much area, so because of that as well, your skill of operations could be limited. The size of labor resources available, so if you can't have just this scarcity, scarcity of resources, human, there's not cheap resources available, human resources not available, so you can't increase your input because human resources is one vital part of this inputs resources so if you can't have more labor for work so that's there's no point in having then then you can't increase your scale of operations basically then the nature of product if it's a less standardized product such as handcrafts it will probably operate better in a small scale business so like it all depends on the nature of the market nature of the product as well if it's a standardized product that means a general product then you might even now, a person wants to buy that product, so it's a necessity product like soft drinks or perhaps toilet tissues and stuff like that. So that's a standardized product. So increasing your factors of increasing your skill of operations, it's good enough for that, so that you can increase your output and of course more people will buy it. But if your products are less standardized, you know already you already know that not everyone will buy it. It is a special item, a customized item perhaps, so that. You know, only few people will buy it. Your target market is small. The product is something that not everyone can buy. So it's better to keep that in small scale business. Nature of demand. If demand for a product is high, the scale of operation of the business may need to be increased in order to meet the demand. So if you know that demand is increasing for a certain product, then yes, you have to increase the scale of operations. But you know, if you know that demand is consistent or not too high, it's being low, it's staying low, then then there's no need for increasing your scale of operations. And finally, the ability of the business owner. If, it's, if the owners are motivated and determined to make the business a well-known brand, it may eventually lead in an increase in the scale of operations. So if you wanna, if the owners want to increase the brand image of the business, they will probably want to increase the size of the business, increase the scale of operations of the business so that they can produce more, they can have a better name, and they can get more sales perhaps. It also depends on the ability of the business owner. So that those these are all the factors that I could thought of of influencing scale that influences scale of operations. In exams, of course, you don't have to write each and every one of them. If it's a eight mark question comes that briefly explain the factors that influence scale of operations or like analyze the factors that influence the scale of operations, you can go over three to four and go into a little bit of exp explain explanation that I just gave. And that should be pretty much it. Uh, what are economies of scale and diseconomies of scale? Economies of scale occurs when the cost of production falls as the scale of operations is increased. So when your scale of operations increase, what happens is that you are using more inputs to generate a greater maximum output. But since you are using more inputs, then because of that also, your cost of production falls. Now why is that? Another definition that you could give for economies of scale is that it could also be defined as a reduction in unit cost of a business resulting from an increase in the scale of operations. Economies of scales are an important concept for any business in any industry and it represents the cost savings and competitive advantages large businesses, larger businesses have over smaller ones. Larger companies are able to produce more by spreading the cost of production over a larger amount of goods. So since you are able to have, you have a large amount of goods that you produce, then your cost of production is also spread over that large amount of goods, and eventually that the cost that you had for the you know your cost that the high cost that you have it's evenly spread over the large amount of goods, and the sales that the sales revenue that is generated from those large amount of goods it covers up for the cost of production, and generally economies of scale offer some competitive advantage to large saving businesses because your unit costs are reduced. Now, we'll discuss about how these unit costs are reduced in the next video when we discuss the different types of economies of scale. So, that like the first, the most common one is the purchasing economies where you buy in bulk. So, since you buy, you don't buy one item at a time, let's say I buy 100 items at a time from supplier, then supplier will probably reduce the price, unit price for product. Let's say one product was sold at $10. You went to supplier, you buy 100, 100 items at a time. 
so suppliers likely to you will negotiate with supplier to give you some discount so the supplier might reduce the unit cost of that particular product let's say he was giving one product at ten dollars but since you are buying hundred products he's giving that same one product at nine dollars or even eight dollars your unit cost is being reduced so because of that it has a lot of cost savings and it gives a competitive advantage now this economy of scale is the complete opposite of economy of scale it can be defined as an increase in unit cost of production resulting from an increase in the scale of operations it is essentially is generally related to management challenges or problems associated with directing a large organization often with many divisions and spread across different locations so it is generally about the challenges that the management faces and the problems that is associated with a larger organization like if there are too many divisions spread across different locations how will you coordinate how will be the communication and employee motivation all, all of that becomes difficult in a large business as well so because of that your unit cost instead of decreasing eventually start increasing and that's what leads to this economies of scale so this graph over here is basically used for economies of scale and diseconomies of scale like when your maximum output increases that is your scale of operations increases your average cost decreases okay your average cost starts decreasing eventually when your output is increasing 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 your average cost is also decreasing that is economies of scale but after a certain amount after a certain output when you further increase your output instead of decreasing they can't go any further down they start increasing your average cost start decreasing why because you can't cooperate because you can't coordinate different departments you have grown so much that there are so many divisions that the communication has become difficult your workforces of your employees are feel feel they feel isolated they feel alienated because they are not given much attention you can't give attention to each and every employee in a larger organization so because of that if you increase your output after this particular level your diseconomies of scale will diseconomies of scale happens that is your average cost starts increasing so that's the whole idea behind this graph that was economies of scale and diseconomies of scale we're going to discuss more about them in the next slides that is what internal economies external economies diseconomies external diseconomies so that's all for today thanks for watching and allah hafiz